in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, they're ripping. That wasn't cool at all. Railroad police in hot pursuit. There they are right there. A challenging bridge overhaul. Something's binding there. Jeremy. Oh, my God. If we don't get those rails in, they're not going to trust me. And a dangerous nighttime repair. Hold it, hold it. Down, build. Threatened to derail a vintage train's historic journey marking Canada's 150th birthday. Not coming home is not an option. Every day across Canada, more than 8,000 workers toil to keep Canadian Pacific's fleet of 1,000 freight trains hauling crucial supplies from coast to coast. But today, this crew is preparing a very different type of train for a once-in-a-lifetime journey. 1401, two cars. 1401, over. This is the Royal Canadian Pacific, a vintage passenger train. Some of the cars are nearly 100 years old. Adam Meeks is part of a dedicated team of engineers preparing it for a unique cross-country trek in honor of Canada's 150 years of Confederation. You're in for a bit of a treat. A train like this goes by so rarely, the likelihood that anybody sees a train like this ever again in their lifetime is practically nil. So we're making history. Nobody has thought of doing anything this big a scale since this railway was built. Two cars stop short there, 1401. The luxury passenger cars date as far back as 1914. The two locomotives were built in the 1950s. They are the iconic F-unit diesel electric. The F is for 14, because each one can generate 1,400 horsepower. It took hundreds of hours to restore this train back into working order. We are dealing with antiques. So in a lot of cases, it's been modernized, but there is still a lot of original equipment in these cars. 1401 stop, good joint, three points. Fourteen not one on the salt truck. The train leaves Port Moody with 50 VIP passengers on board, including the top brass from the Canadian Pacific Railway. Engineer Wally Vaninsky and conductor Alan Bodker are in the driver's cab for the first leg of the journey. Is there a signal? Is there a signal? Well, I've worked for CT Rail for just over 34 years now. When I got told I was running this train today, I, it was a special moment for me. This lead locomotive that we're currently riding right now was built in 1958. Yeah, you don't see, see too many of these engines around anymore. The Royal Canadian Pacific will travel 4,500 kilometers from Port Moody, BC to its final destination in Ottawa. The journey will take 26 days, with stops in 13 cities along the way. The stop that matters most is Revelstoke. The Prime Minister is coming to honour the country and the railroad. It rests on the shoulders of Canadian Pacific's roadmasters to make sure nothing gets in the way of this train. Our boss has put it to us, delaying the 150 train is not an option. We just have to make sure that we just keep moving forward because, you know. It's go time and you only have so much time to get this job done. You know, everybody does try to stay focused. We want to look good, like this is a big, big deal. But this journey couldn't have come at a worse time for the team. The snow has thawed. All the big track engineering projects are scheduled to take place now in the Rockies. Roadmaster Chad Deschamps is setting up to overhaul this massive swing bridge that passes over a channel called the Sycamus Narrows. Sycamus, BC, in the summertime, it's houseboat capital of the world, basically, and uh, this is a pretty busy channel. This is a swing bridge, but right now it can't swing. For the fact that we have winter rails in, this water is rising, and uh, it could be any day where somebody phones and says they need to get a boat through here and we don't want to look bad by not being able to swing the bridge. Well, we're getting ready to do our bridge job here, waiting on two westbounds. Once they go by, we'll get the main track.
200 kilometers to the west. 14 knot one east, clear to medium. The Royal Canadian Pacific commemorative train is making its way towards Chad's team at the Sycamus Swing Bridge. We have a lot of manpower out here that do work the rail. We're just looking for any debris that might be on the track. So we're uh, consistently looking out the window, looking for any obstructions or any other issues. Wally has decades of experience driving freight, but none driving people. Driving a, a passenger train compared to a freight train is it's short and relatively heavy, and the power is uh, smaller. The F unit has less horsepower than modern day freight locomotives. But its gearing system was designed for passenger service, so it can accelerate much faster. You need to be on the ball and pay attention to the track ahead of you because you could injure some people or spill their drinks. In its heyday, Canadian Pacific wined and dined the rich and powerful from all over the world, including King George VI and his wife, Queen Elizabeth, JFK and Jackie Kennedy, and Sir Winston Churchill. Today, Wally has his own royal family on board. We have some VPs on board. We've got the president of the CP Rail on with us today as well, and his family. If you don't want to give him a rough ride and be that guy that uh, is known for bonking the uh, vice president and the president around too much, don't want to get fired today. <laughs> At the Sycamus Swing Bridge. Bob, you want us to head down the other way and start knocking clips off? The tracks are clear, and Chad's crew is ready to start the big job. The bridge's central pillar contains two sets of hydraulic jacks. The team needs to replace the winter rails with summer rails that unlock to allow the jacks to lift and then rotate the bridge. This allows large boats to pass underneath in the summer when the water is high. The last truck's on the track. They're already uh, tearing apart the rail. Yeah, basically we're gonna be taking out the winter rails, which are just straight running rails through. We clear these new red rails that we're putting in. They're called Ridex rails, which allows the bridge to open and swing. The Ridex rails have a special miter joint that creates a temporary connection when the bridge is shut. That allows the rail to be able to come apart as the bridge opens and swings, comes back, closes, and the rail contacts again, and it's passable for trains. The specialized rails are 25 times more expensive than traditional rails, so workers remove them in the winter when the narrows are frozen over. Button this up, and then we're going to put that in together. But that means every spring, they have to be reinstalled. They know the urgency that we have to get the rails in. We've got a three-hour timeline. Oh, that's it's too tight, eh? Yeah, yeah the tension. Can we put a bar in there and just spread that a little bit so that you guys can bring it up without knocking all the anchors? The biggest thing on the back of our mind is delaying the 150. Any delays are going to delay the whole scheduling. Give that right act block just a tap. See if we can spread this open a little bit. Give it a good one. Good. That's good. That'll work. We've got one set of rails in here already. Getting ready to drop in the rails on the other side of the track. Let me get this end in and drop it in. Something's binding there. Something's binding. How close are we there? Is that tight? Oh, that sucks. Well, we can't really wedge it. Oh, my god. If we don't get those rails in, it looks bad on us. On the Sycamus Swing Bridge, Chad's crew is struggling to install one of the new rails. Not the right one. That sucks. <sighs> OK, just put it in the middle there for now. As soon as he lets go of that rail, well, he's grabbing the other one. They've been trying to fit the rail into the wrong side of the bridge. Sorry, bud. One step back, we uh, set out one of the rails for the other side by mistake and put it on this side, but we'll remedy that. Coming down. Coming your way, Chad. Like, swing it. To you. Good. Right there, eh? Jake, give me a spike. The mistake cost them valuable time. 
the Royal Canadian Pacific is headed their way on a cross-country journey to celebrate Canada's 150th birthday. We did this in about a half an hour delay. One hundred and forty kilometers west at the Semlin West turnout. Well, might as well go and walk the switch. Roadmaster Rock Ballon is gearing up to swap out a sixty-meter section of rail that allows trains to change their route onto another set of tracks. This switch has given us nothing but problems all winter. We run a lot of trains on this track. It's tired. One hundred million tons of traffic moves through here every year. See all the mud is right in here. So what happens is when it gets wet, the track starts to pump, and you can have what's called wheel lift, where it actually lifts up off the rail and goes on the ground. Switch replacement used to be Rock's specialty before he got promoted to Roadmaster two months ago. I still love building stuff. I love installing stuff. There's a sense of accomplishment when you're done um, that you don't get from sending emails. The switch replacement will shut down the main line for six hours. Nice work. So it's been scheduled for the crack of dawn tomorrow, when demands on the line are lighter. I think she's done this once or twice. <laughs> uh, here's the new switch going in. To save downtime on the track, the new switch has been pre-assembled, ties and all. Quite the equipment we need to haul this into place. Switch replacement is high pressure and high stakes especially when it will be done in the dark. There are extreme dangers because we're talking about really heavy, really fast pieces of equipment. It's very serious. I take it very personally, making sure the job gets done right and safely because not coming home is not an option for me or anybody else that I know. Yeah. 85 kilometers east in Kamloops, Canadian Pacific Police Constables Mike Millay and Dave Lucas are securing their beat for the Royal Canadian Pacific's safe passage. Yeah, the camp's still there, under the bridge. Right along so, the rail there? Right along the rail and right by the entranceway out of the hole under the sign. Yeah. Kamloops has a large rail yard in the middle of town. Canadian Pacific has 70 officers to patrol major hubs like this one to keep the track secure and the public safe. Dispatch, Whiskey Kilo 3. Any funny business happening within 500 meters of the tracks is their business. Bradley. Bradley. It's the police. We just want to talk to you for a minute about your camp. And Mike and Dave have the same power as any other police officer in Canada. Say, during the summer, this becomes a shanty town, and lots and lots of homeless people camp down here by the riverbank, so they have to cross the, the tracks to get to. Come on up. Yeah. Our the concern is that you're coming across back and forth across tracks in order to access the camp. Yeah. So that's a safety issue for us. Obviously, the trains are coming fast, and sometimes you don't hear them. And yeah. So Believe it or not, a train actually can sneak up on you. <laughs> if I believe it. If you're standing in the middle of the railroad tracks, very little sound from a moving train travels toward you. Almost all of the sound is directed out the sides. Experienced railroaders may detect a high-pitched singing sound about 30 seconds prior to the train's arrival. But the average person wouldn't hear the train at all until it's too late. So uh, Bradley's going to have to pack up here today, clean up all the stuff. Just don't cross the tracks. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Every year, approximately 46 people in Canada are killed as a result of railway trespassing. And Mike and Dave have witnessed some of these gruesome incidents firsthand. A few years back, a couple young ladies were out on a bachelorette party at a local club that's close to the tracks. And there was a train that was stopped at the time. And the bride of the party decided that she would crawl underneath the train. As the train started moving, she got stuck. Uh, on her bachelorette party, she uh, became deceased. Alcohol and drugs are a common theme in these deaths. Right there. So drug use. Yeah, heroin. So you got the saline. There's the spoon. spoon. They're shooting up right here, like six feet from the tracks. And they're going to be all high, possibly overdosing right here beside a train. Spence. Spencer. 
It's the police, buddy. You need to come on and talk to us for a minute, okay? In this town, Dave and Mike know everybody. So, oh, we got his dog back. Hey, buddy. You got him back. You got him back. Well, that's good. And everybody knows them. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Safety is uh, paramount here, and that's why we like to clean some of these camps up. There's a hey, they're going green right now. I guess how close they are. Yeah. It's right here, right next to, to where people decide to try and live. Just outside Kamloops, the Royal Canadian Pacific is about to pass right by Rock Ballon. We're roughly an hour out of Kamloops, and uh, we stayed on the main track here and did go through the turnout. Part of our responsibility is to actually inspect every train that goes by. Rock is watching out for anything that could pose a safety hazard, like sparks on the wheels. CP4 Foreman Rock Villain, 1401, please stand straight over. Good on the PK both sides. Over. PK, thanks, you gentlemen. Have a great morning. And you as well, Foreman Rock Villain. With the inspection complete, they can resume normal track speed of 50 miles an hour. That's it for the restrictions there, Wally. That's it. No more. It's all about timing, keeping the schedule. Yes. In North Bend, BC, Jimmy Taylor is starting his fourth week on the steel gangs, replacing worn rails. So what we're gonna do is what me as a laborer is gonna do every day. We're gonna stop at a spot. I'm gonna run ahead and grab a spike mall. I'm gonna smack off all the anchors. Then we're gonna go to the next spot. And then to that spot, I'm gonna grab a spike mall. I'm gonna smack off all the anchors. And then after that, this is, this is where it gets complicated. I'm gonna go to the next spot. I'm gonna grab a spike hole. You get the idea. Jimmy used to be a part of the Revelstoke crew, but he blew it by behaving badly one too many times. His former boss, Chad, sent him here hoping that the hard work would set him straight. This job is now a second chance, and I am taking it a lot more seriously. That's one of the reasons why I decided to come out here, to actually take my career a lot more seriously. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Can you bring the truck up? Jimmy's boss, 35-year-old Alina Miller, knows exactly how to deal with her new charge. Keep working, wizard. We've got four more spots to bang off. I can't wait. My job is to make him sweat and almost pass out on track. A few days ago, he was pretty hurt when he came to work, so I worked him extra hard. I don't think he'll be coming to work again like that, I'll tell you that. <laughs> She's a good foreman. Pretty annoying sometimes, but good form and all in all. <laughs> annoying, because what, I make you work? He's actually doing pretty good. He's not really that whiny as everybody thinks he is, and he has been working pretty hard, actually. Three hundred and fifty kilometers east at the Sycamore Swing Bridge. Chad is counting down the minutes. So we're looking at another half an hour, right, for you guys? Yeah. We're just finishing buttoning things up. Signals is uh, putting on their sensors and getting their bracketry on and ready to go. There's a sensor on each rail that allows the bridge to open. If that's out of whack, then the bridge won't open. If this isn't working, nobody in Calgary knows if the bridge is down or up or held up with something. Still red. Still red? That is correct. There's too much of a gap between the sensor and the steel plate. Still? OK, we're good. The sensor wasn't actually seeing the metal because the sensor was too far down. It's got the signal now. I'm just tightening it down. RTC bridge job's all done. And I've got a signal indication. Thank you very much, RTC. Uh, that's all I needed. Foreman Clarko. You're good? Yes, we're coming. Over. Thank you, sir. They finished just under the wire. I'm very pleased with how this job turned out. Boss is pretty happy. Everybody worked as a team, and it just came together really smooth. 
and the guys walking around with their chests out, basically puffed out. You know, you know what I mean? They're happy. Couldn't ask for a better day. They're moving. With the crews off the track, the Royal Canadian Pacific is cleared to pass. But just as they clear the crossing, Trimaster Tracy, Trimaster Mistel, over. So we have a cable or something hanging off the side of the car. It looked like fairly substantial. Nothing that came off the car, but we caught something. Wally and Alan have been forced to make an emergency stop of the Royal Canadian Pacific train just outside Sycamus, BC. There was a report of a cable on top of a car that may have done some damage. The conductor and the train master are going to get out and they're going to see if they can find out what happened with it, what we hit. Aboard is train master Mark Roussel, who takes charge in situations like these. How far back is it? Which car is it, Justin? Uh, it will be one of the newer aluminum cars. Luckily, a train is stopped on the opposite track. It will provide the vantage point the crew needs to look for the loose cable. 1401, whenever you're set, Wally, if you want to go ahead easy, about eight coaches or so for a set. 1401, going ahead eight, sir. Okay. So this would be the dish here. Mark is the one who saw it, and he suspects the cable may have come loose from a satellite dish. I've not seen the cable on this side yet. Okay, now why not be good when you stop? What the cable's on the other side? Uh, you got two dishes over here, but everything looks fine over here on my side. There's no sign of the dangling cable anywhere. Good to go here? Good to go. No damage to report. The train's all yours when you're ready to go, 1401. Okay, we're uh, just about to head out and we'll be on our way. Fourteen not one east clear. Don't see any other safety issues or anything else, so uh, we're able to carry on. Now, if it was a cable that was long enough, you could damage wayside equipment, signals. You get caught up in uh, in our brake rigging. Hopefully, no more issues uh, across the road and we get to our destination. in North Bend on the Steel Gangs. Let's go. We're holding up production. Alina and Jimmy have just one day to replace 90 meters of worn rail. There shouldn't be anything too special about today. Just swinging hammers. Uh, just going to be a basic day. Surprisingly enough, I do actually keep up. I'm pretty good up front, honestly, as a laborer. So. He has no idea that Alina has an extra special test in mind. He likes to talk the talk. We're going to see what he's really made of. Do you want to do some grind? I mean, I'm not really dressed for PPE or grind. You can use his hard hat and his oh. The rails need to be stripped of rust, dust, and grime before they're welded onto the new track. Extra sweaty today. I can't wait. Are you right handed or left handed? Right handed. Right hand. So, yeah. Straddle the rail like this and go that way. Okay. I don't think he'll be bitching about how easy front end has it anymore. After about the third grind, your arms are like I've cut a lot of rail, but grinding is pretty bad because you've got to hold the saw at this awkward angle while bent right over, moving up and down. I definitely have a lot of respect for the other guy doing it. He does about 19 of these a day, I think. Yeah, and I'm already dead on this one. Grinding sucks. Despite the whining, Jimmy has managed to impress his boss. Jimmy's sweating a little bit back there right now, but he's already bumped up twice in pay today. Back to Chad. <laughs> 
as the Royal Canadian Pacific pushes east. Thousands of CP workers across the country prepare for the night shift. This is when the biggest track repair jobs are carried out. It's 3.30 a.m. Roadmaster Rock Balland is heading to the Semlin West turnout for tonight's ambitious switch replacement. I hope this rough road isn't messing up my hair. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody's on standby. We're going to be ripping out the old track, throwing it in the weeds, digging out the ballast, and then reinstalling this new piece of track. The switch is 60 meters long and weighs 55,000 kilograms. Rock's crew will have to remove it in three parts, starting with the front section where the tracks start to separate. Right from the start, we got six hours, so the pressure's on to get it done. Rock has an arsenal of machines primed to help out. Three excavators, a 980 loader, a crane, and a special tamping machine designed to level the freshly laid ballast, which supports the tracks. Yeah, the whole track's coming up. The machines must work in perfect unison. Good, good. If switch replacement were a symphony, Rock would be the conductor. Hello, Vern, can you come in here? And Vern, in the excavator, would be first violin. Okay, clear! No! Rock, what do you need? Can you bump a little more there, uh, Vern? Hang on, hang on. But Vern can't carry the tune alone. It takes Harold in the second excavator to help lift the massive piece of old track safely into the ditch. Harold, over here. Down. Good. I've always enjoyed doing futility work. It's fun because I walk into an old, junky, worn out turnout, and by the time we're done, it looks good. I like that. Let me know when you're ready there, Rock. Yep. Pull in for you, Harold. Watch yourself, boys. There you go. Fire down the area. There you go. There you go. You got to pay attention. Making a mistake out here gets you killed. Plain and simple. We've got the track ripped out. We've got the switch machine. It's a very expensive piece of gear here we got moving. The switch links to computers in Calgary, 1,000 kilometers away, where rail traffic controllers can switch the direction of the tracks remotely. Harold, are you uh, going to start digging the points out here? I'm going to try and make it as close to level as possible so that there's less surfacing time. Got to go down some more, probably another five inches. It's going to make a big difference for how fast we can get clear. The time crunch is right from the beginning right to the end. It doesn't go away till you're done. Jordy, Jordy, can you pick up a bit more? In the Rockies. Let's pull back around into the front of the general yard office here. Railroad cops Mike and Dave have had a report of trespassers in the local rail yard. It's only track three is leaving tonight, right? Yes, so if they were going to jump on something, this would be the one. This would be the one they're on, yeah. The rail yard has 16 separate tracks and handles more than 3,000 cars every day. Lots of hiding places. With so many trains coming and going, it's an ideal place for freight hoppers to catch a free ride out of town. Check the handbrake. Handbrake. Close good, so yeah. Freight hopping is as old as the railroad itself. In the early 1900s, migrant workers and homeless job seekers rode the rails looking for a better life. Hobos used to jump on moving freight trains so they wouldn't be caught. It was illegal and dangerous, and idealized as a symbol of freedom. Modern freight hoppers have to hide better. Not here, eh? No, I don't think he's here. All right, let's go. The trains and tracks seem clear. But just as they leave the yard. Holy Let's go, Dave. Okay. They spot two cars speeding through the railway crossing. Yeah, they're ripping. That wasn't cool at all. What was it? What, what kind of vehicle? Uh, Silver Lake Ultima. 
go to the rib. I think it's this guy right here. Oh, yeah, it's that one right there. He's the second one in. Second one in? Just give it yeah. yeah. In Kamloops, Canadian Pacific Police Constables Mike and Dave are pursuing two cars they saw speeding through the railway crossing. There they are, right there. This way? Yeah, I'm gonna go right. Look like that newer car, so I'm not sure if this is him or not. They catch up to one of them. Guy and a girl. Dispatch was Kilo 2. Code 3 traffic lands down in 10th. Hello, sir, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Pretty good. You just came down Lauren Street, passing people? No, I did not pass anyone, no. Okay. Why are you nervous, brother? I don't know, I've never been pulled over before. Everybody's out here kind of horsing around street racing, is that the thing, or? We all just came from a meeting. Uh, we had a vehicle pass us while we were in the yard at a high rate of speed, and we caught up to this vehicle, and it looked like it was ready to do a brake stand at the lights. So who's the guy that drives the silver car? Okay. Does he know him? Yeah, they're all together. That's an industrial area where a lot of people work, like CP works and all those employees. He was doing between like probably 100, 110 when he went by that guy. Do you know that that's a restable offense for dangerous driving? That guy's gonna kill somebody. Like that, that is like stupid driving. In town, like there's a place for that racetrack, okay? That's your lecture for the night rather than a ticket. Okay, have a good night, you're free to go. Him. It's a freaking ice cream. We caught right up to him. Cause I knew he was gonna get stuck in traffic. It was that silver one that we, uh, the, the guy was looking at us like this when he was all like, <laughs> how'd he give him careless driving? That totally. But the lecture was pretty good. Oh, perfect. You're the man. You were made for this. <laughs> Your way, your way. At the Semlin West turnout. Down, down. Roadmaster Rock Balond and his team have been working since 3 a.m. to wrestle the new 55 ton switch into place. Hopefully we didn't it. No, I think we're good. Let's go down a little bit, boys. Okay, good. I need you guys to come towards me and whoa, right there. Okay, down just a little bit. Right there. As dawn breaks, they finally position the new track in place. 7.15, we're under a bit of a time crunch as per usual. We're gonna be cutting there close. Now they need to attach the new track to the old section. So Harold, we'll start right up here. We're gonna realign the old track to line into the new turnout. That's different angles, it's a different length switch. A little more Harold if you can. This is a critical point in the operation. Perfect, good. It's got to come in a bit. All edge, it's high. Yeah, you can see it starts to grad, yeah. get more gradual going down there. If they can't bend the old track to join up seamlessly with the new piece, it could mean hours of extra work. Oh, good. Can you go up a little more, Harold? That's pretty much it, eh? OK. Can you come down a little bit on the tail end there? A little bit? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, drop her down there, Harold. A little more, Vern. Oh! Good. Jack that up now. There you go. Okay. And then down. Oh, right there. Hold it there. Hold the bolt. There's a lot of pressure, super high stress. There's a lot riding on it. Yeah, we were kissing it when we should have been slapping it. You've got potential derailments if you don't get it right. You're doing them all the same way. I really don't care. Okay. Let's uh, tighten those up. Walter! Walter! Time is it? We're still pretty good, dude. Real close now. Yeah, we'll be right on the right on the bubble. Final task, lay down the ballast. The ballast is the rock that holds the track in place. All 40 tons of it. It interlocks together. It's all angled. 
once you've vibrated together, the trains run over it, it actually creates a really good structure for the tracks to sit on. And you dumped a bit too much rock, Rock. Listen, you know that you can never have enough rock. <laughs> the pressure's off now, right? You can relax a little bit now. We're pretty much in the cliff with five minutes to spare, so our boys did a great job today. Nice work, buddy. Once you surface it and you get to watch the first train over it, it's a good feeling. Not, not as good as a nice steak, but it's pretty good. <laughs> Two hundred kilometers east, a second crew has taken over the controls for the Royal Canadian Pacific's journey. All the years of working here at CP, this is the first time I'll be running this train, so it's really exciting. At the helm is engineer Gord Meadows, and riding shotgun is conductor Garth Dimturco. CP fourteen knot one, east clear signal. Clear. They're just sixty minutes from Revelstoke. This is an area where you got to keep your eyes open and watching because it's around the rock bluffs here. Could be rocks or you see a lot of mountain goats down here sometimes that I don't like hitting anything. Especially on a unit like this where you don't want to be the guy that wrecks this unit. That, you know, I only got six years in, I got a long time to be that guy if we hit something with this thing. So. Ahead of the train in Revelstoke, crowds are gathering in anticipation of this historic train's arrival. It's a big deal. Prime Minister of Canada is going to be in Revelstoke, our hometown. Uh, it's going to be a huge thing. We're going to have a big party. There's going to be a concert, barbecue. With work on the swing bridge complete, Roadmaster Chad Deschamps heads to join the welcoming party. Everything went, went smooth, and the train's en route. We're done. We feel really good that we made this happen. Roadmaster, Chad Deschamps, Assistant Roadmaster, Curtis Attic on 11. But all it takes is one call. Curtis Attic, uh, Roadmaster, Chad Deschamps, go ahead over. And Chad's happy place comes crashing down around him. Broken right through, and she didn't see that. Broken all the way through. My 10-year-old can see that. The Royal Canadian Pacific is due to arrive in Revelstoke in less than an hour. This bottom piece is ready to fall right out, eh? But Chad has just discovered a broken rail that could bring the historic train to a halt. That's unacceptable, eh? I mean, you guys go up and down these yeah. tracks, right? I know. Yeah. Like, this is a huge indication something's wrong. We uh, need to throw in a rail at 1234N. What's the problem there? We got a broken rail. North rail, north track, right at the poly. Unfortunately, today, we found something that needs immediate attention. It happens. Things get worn out. They break. We find stuff. It's just, this is not the day that you want to find this stuff. It's going to be tough rounding up an emergency crew on such short notice. Hey, Chad. Huh? Chicken can't work late today. He said he's got his heart medication at home. He hasn't had it. He's got to get there and get it. I'll phone Chicken right now, and I'll go to the pharmacy and get him some heart medication. In North Bend. At this point during the day, we're up against trains. Now, if you notice, trains can't run on no tracks here. So we got to get this going before they start calling us. Jimmy Taylor has been doing such a good job on the production gangs that Alina has put him in charge of the rookies. Look at how innocent he looks. He has no idea what's ahead of him. You're kind of like the older brother I wish I never had. <laughs> From what I've seen, Jimmy's really stepped up his game. He's really developed a lot. So I got him to take the green vest under his wing, and I hope that he's mentoring these new hires that are coming out like in that, a right? professional now. way. I'd like to say you're doing a good job. Thank you very much. I'd like to say you're doing a good job, but I'm just kidding. Now he's, he's, he's one of my favorites that I forgot his name completely. After a troubled start on the railroad, Jimmy seems to be finding his place and is even working up the ranks. Give it a good walk, hard as you can. 
as much as I joke around or play around with the guys, I take my job 100% seriously. There's nothing in the rule book that says that we can't have fun at work. See, on the railway, it kind of works backwards. So when I'm giving you a hard time and insulting you, see, I wouldn't do that if I didn't like you. Constructive criticism. It's constructive criticism, giving me wisdom now. Given the whiz, wisdom. Being okay. sent to the steel gangs Just may like be the best thing that could have happened to Jimmy. Here, I actually feel needed. I feel wanted. I have this new feeling of confidence that I never had before. And I'm literally happy and excited to come to work almost every morning. I walk down the hallway of my hotel with a big smile on my face and singing a song. The guys are like, shut up, wizard, stop singing. But I'll keep singing away. I'm really proud of where he has gotten to so far, but he is still very young and he still needs guidance, but uh, I think he's on the right path. Good job, boys. First round's on me. Woo! <laughs> the Royal Canadian Pacific is now just minutes away from Revelstoke. CB 1401 East, clear signal for to Revelstoke. But Chad is still scrambling to fix the broken rail. Is that enough clearance here for you? But from there to here, anchor's off, spikes pulled on the high side. He managed to scrape together an emergency crew. But it doesn't mean they're happy about it. Right when I wanted to go home on time, hey, drive have beer? That's the way yep. it always goes, buddy. That's oh. railroading. That is railroading at its finest. OK, fire and hole. Tight. It puts us behind the eight ball. Okay, down. The urgency level goes way up. We can't waste any time. With the Royal Canadian Pacific on their doorstep, Chad's crew is racing to the finish line. Okay, fellas. Hey, thanks. I'm gonna go. These fellas got it under control. You staying here? You're gonna go. You know. 17 minutes so far, they got the rail in drilled. They just got to get the bars on. Good job today. It doesn't stop. You just get used to it. Then you got your days that uh, nothing happens, then you start to worry, because <laughs> it's just too good. <laughs> Five minutes to get stopped. We're here. We got here on time. With the tracks finally clear, the historic train rolls into Revelstoke. It's always nice when people are waving at you and you want you to blow the horn. It's pretty neat. And not everybody wants you to blow the horn and wave at them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely once in a lifetime experience. Awesome time and great trip. I wish I could do it again. I guess that's it. That's her. Good trip. Good evening. How you guys doing? You can have all the machines in the world, but to deal with the Rockies, you have to have a team to go with it. The, the men and women that work here, tough mentally and physically. If you're away from home and it's a lot of work, you gotta really have your head in the game. Most of the world would see a railroader as a tough, rugged man, dirt all over his face with a big, thick beard and a hammer over his shoulders. But honestly, what you think railroaders are isn't what they actually are. Railroaders come in all shapes and sizes. I've worked many other places. I've done the six inch stilettos, hair done, you know, and this, I thoroughly enjoy this. I like the fact that I can work around a bunch of guys and just be who I am, and they take me as I am. The best things about the job is it's constantly changing. There's always something new that you got to go do. The worst thing about the job is there's always something changing, and you never get to build a plan for very long. Railroading does get in your blood. You need to care about what's going on out here to do the job properly. I love everything about CP. I sound like such a suckle right now, but it's totally true. I, I love it out here. 
This train is an example of how we bound the two oceans together and connected people from coast to coast. It's great to see everyone to continue to celebrate 150 years. All right, Canada, all right, BC, all right, Rebel Star. Merci beaucoup.